So, welcome everyone to this 30 minutes webinar. I'm Lucio Bordonaro, customer service specialist and trainer here at WebRatio. Today we are going to see in this 30 minutes webinar all the new features introduced with WebRatio mobile platform 8.2. This is the webinar agenda uh, and all the topics we will go through this 30 minutes webinar starting from push notifications. Then we will take a look at the device integration features that, that have been in, introduced with WebRatio mobile platform 8.2, which are the calendar integration, the contact integration, the barcode integration. And finally, we will have a look at the user registration feature. At the end of the live session, uh, we will have five or ten minutes dedicated to question and answer. So please, if you have questions during the live session, I kindly ask you to write directly into the GoToMeeting chat so that I will be able to answer at the end of the webinar. So let's start from push notifications. What is a push notification? Well, a push notification is a message or an alert which is delivered from a centralized server to all the endpoint devices which are registered to this service. Usually in the uh, common usage, the push notifications are used for news, alerts, or social media. So, things that do change quickly and that need frequent updates. On the left of this slide, you have the, the typical scenario of a centralized server sending the notification to all the endpoint devices, while on the right, you have maybe the most known example of push notification, which is the Facebook mobile app. Okay, so how do we implement push notification? Well, you need to have a backend which generates the notifications and the notification content, and you need to have a front-end that receives the push notifications. In the example that I'm going to show you uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to model both the backend and the frontend in WebRatio. So the standard approach in WebRatio mobile platform is to use a mobile project and a data service project. But everything you do with WebRatio mobile platform can be mixed with, uh, uh, with services or application done externally from WebRatio. So today we are going to see just how to do the push notification and how to implement the push notifications in WebRatio mobile platform. Okay. Push notifications are available both on Android and iOS, but they have different settings due to the different policy management of the operating systems. So as you can see from this uh, slide, the Android, uh, the Android standard is quite straightforward. So the process is very simple and you have a few actors participating. While the iOS, uh, the iOS push notification implementation is a little bit more complicated as you have also another actor, an external actor, which is the iOS player participating. By the way, we created two articles which are already published on our learning system that will guide you through the step of creating and uh, satisfying all the prerequisites in order to run and implement push notification. The two articles are how to configure Google Cloud Messaging Service and how to generate an Apple push notification service certificate. The article are already available online 
and guides you into a step-by-step -step tutorial, okay? In the, this webinar, we are going to cover the Android use case, since it's quite straightforward and it's way easier to realize, okay? But on our learning system, you have both the options. So, once that uh, we introduce push notifications from a theoretical point of view, let's see how to implement those in WebRatio. I've already created a mobile project and a backend project, okay, that I will use during this webinar. I will start modeling from the backend. So, in order to generate push notification, our backend needs to have a notification provider, okay? The push notification provider can be added from the project outline. I'm going to create a notification provider for Android. So let me configure, giving a name. So Android push notifications for the Android platform. And here I need the API key of the Google Cloud Service credentials. How to generate this API key is uh, a step reported in the article that I showed you previously. I've already prepared one, so I just copy and paste the API key, and then I save. Now I need to create a service view Okay, the service view will contain the notification services which is used to generate push notifications. So I'm going to add a port that I will call notification event. Okay, this is the solicit uh, operation which can be re renamed into event notification. The invocation style must be set to rest and the request method must be set to get. Okay. In this example, we are going to model a service that we will call to generate a push notification, but as you, as you will see by modeling on your own, this is just an example. So you can do it in a job or from a web application invoking this service. So let's start modeling the service, adding to this uh, web service a selector, okay, that finds all the devices that we want to send the notification to. So I'm going to set up the data binding for this selector, retrieving all the devices, and adding some condition. One uh, mandatory condition is that the device ID is not null, so I'm going to model this conditional expression. Okay. And another condition is that the platform that we want to target is Android. So I'm going to take the platform attribute equal ignore case Android. Okay, the selector is the next operation done after the solicit. So then I need to add a two-day operation since I want to send information about the event, the next event starting from today. So I need a time that I activate with this uh, success flow, and then I retrieve the event that I want to notify from my domain model, okay? So I just set the data binding with the event class, and I add just one condition, which is the start date that must be greater than today. Okay, the value is provided by the time component, 
okay? Okay. And finally, I have to send the notification using the send notification component, which is available inside the utility components section. Okay. I have to set up all the required binding. So this is activated by a success flow, which passes the event details, which are the message that can be the notes and the title, which is the title of the event. Then I need to pass to the send notification also the information about the devices that I want to target with my service. So I just add the data flow that goes through the send notification and passes all the notification device ID and the platform. Moreover, I want that when the notification is received by the mobile device, the user will be able to open and see the details. So what am I going to do is to add another parameter here, which is the event key. The event key will be provided by the selector on the events. Okay. Then I just add at the end of the service execution, I add the response. Okay. So this is the uh, response, which must be set to type JSON and status code OK. I add another success flow to reach this response, and then I save. Basically, this is our web service. We only need one parameter, which is the notification name. I will uh, set up a name like this, like event notification. Then I save and I publish the data service project. So in a few seconds, we will be able to see from the REST web service page a new service related to the push notifications. Okay, let me generate so that it's restarting the Tomcat. Okay, and in the meanwhile, we are going to model also the IFML model of the mobile project. What we need to do here is to add a notification event. So here you see that the notification event is available as a service from our webinar backend. Now let's go back to the mobile project. I need a notification event inside the app view that is called in the same way of the notification name. So event notification. This event leads directly to the detail component that shows the details of an event that must be configured in order to receive things from the list component or through the detail. So this key condition becomes false and I need an additional attribute condition based on the remote key, okay, which is the parameter coming from this event notification. So in the event notification, I need to add another parameter, which is the event key coming from the generated uh, notification. And the remote key must be set to the remote attribute, saying that it must be equal with predicate, with predicate false. Now I need to bind everything, so I just add here the remote key and the conditional expression must work with an OR operator. Okay, at this point, since the uh, backend is online and the mobile project is okay, I start the generation of the mobile project and then I open the emulator from the device. So I'm going to start 
the web ratio mobile developer app okay let me close and restart the mobile app okay remember that when you introduce push notification you have to set the notification sender id here in order to uh, let your mobile application be able to receive notifications you will see the app dashboard coming up here and what we can do is to scan the qr code generated and let our emulator start the mobile application so you just go back to the emulator you will see you see it uh, connecting it should take some seconds okay it's loading the application and now in a few seconds we will be able to see the main screen of the app it's now authenticating and synchronizing okay this is the main screen what we can do to simulate the generation of the notification is to just invoke this service okay and you see here it appeared the notification when we click on the notification we are able to see the details okay if you put this uh, operation chain that we done on the web service in the back end into a job you will be able to reproduce the notification every uh, for example every two minutes okay so that if i run once again the service i receive another notification and i'm able to open the details okay now let's move to the next topic which is the calendar component we integrated the calendar uh, component in order to be able to add events to the calendar and also to open the calendar just for viewing it let's see how to do it in web ratio i work on the mobile project adding a new screen which is the calendar screen okay i also add an event on the toolbar which is the calendar event that will redirect the user to the calendar screen i add the calendar events to the bottom bar and then i go back to the app view in this screen i'm going to add a view component okay that will open the calendar to open the calendar we need an action definition that has in the inside the calendar component working in open calendar mode okay you see here that you have two options save event or open calendar you just need to set up all the uh, flows so you just put the success flow and the error flow you go back to the app view and then you place an instance of the action definition linking to the open calendar okay this will be the open calendar event perfect i just add the success flow here that redirects back to the uh, to the screen let's see what we have done simply regenerating the mobile uh, project we will be able to see it here reloading the uh, the emulator so let me just close everything okay I reopen the emulator and I just connect once again okay and from the main screen we will be able to see a new uh, event a new button in the bottom bar which redirects to the calendar page okay you see here calendar if i press here i have the screen which is which contains the open calendar button if you click here you will see that the device calendar is now opened and with the back button you can go back to your application 
let's model another uh, another another feature which is the possibility of saving a calendar saving an event sorry to the calendar so i just create another action definition which is the save to calendar okay i need another calendar component this time in mode save event i bind all the required flows and I use the input port wizard to create the parameters. I just need uh, some of them, not, uh, not all of them, just to be a little bit quicker. So then I go back to the app view and I add another action definition instance using the save to calendar action definition. I have a new flow which starts directly from the events list, which is save, that goes to this action definition and passes on this binding all the required data. Let me save and generate once again so that we will be able to see in a few seconds the new, the new feature already modeled. So I navigate back to the main screen Okay, now you see that I have also the save button for events. If I click here, the device calendar is open with all the properties that I added in my, that I add, sorry, in my event. So then when I click save, the event is created directly into the device calendar. Okay, let's see another feature, which is the context integration. Content context integration enables the user to save a contact into the uh, context of uh, the device or to pick a contact from the device. We will model this feature in another way, adding a new screen, which is the context screen. Okay, this screen contains uh, an action, sorry, a new component called actions that will uh, will let us open the uh, contacts from the device and also as a form with all the contacts data that helps us to create a new contact and save it into the device. I will have the first name, the last name, the mobile phone number, the work email, and the home email information, okay? Now I need an action definition that saves to the contacts, okay? Also, the contact operation can be used in two different modes. One is to save and the other one is to pick. So I just add all the required flows. So all the required success flows. And I use the save contact mode. Then I use the input port wizard to create all the required parameters. So first name, last name, uh, home email, work email, and mobile phone number. I go back to the app view and I place an instance of the action definition save contact. Then I add a flow starting from the form, which is the save flow, that passes all the details of the contact to the action definitions and goes back to the screen. Okay, in the meanwhile, I already model an action definition another action definition that picks a contact from the device contact list. Okay, I need once again the contact operation, this time in pick contact mode, which is reached by a success flow, and I place immediately after a create on the contact class, okay? So that in this way, I pick a contact and then I create it immediately 
in the back end and also on the front end uh, domain model. So I just pass everything that I have here and I save. And when I'm here into the into the app view, I place an instance of the open, uh, sorry, of the peak contact action definition. I add the navigation flow, which is peak from contacts, okay? And the success flow that redirects back to this page. Moreover, I can add a list of contacts into this page so that we will be able to see all of the contacts added from the device contact list. I set all the required binding for first name and last name. I order everything by last name, okay? And then I add a new event, sorry, add a new event to the toolbar in order to reach the contacts screen, okay? I also need to add these contacts to the bottom bar, then I save and I generate the mobile project. And in a few seconds, as soon as the generation ends, I will be able to see also the contact feature. So I navigate back to the home screen. Okay, I have the uh, calendar button, sorry, the contact button here in the bottom right. If I click, I can create a new contact or I can pick from the list. Let's start picking a contact. So I open the device contact. I open one contact and this one is going to be saved, as you can see here in the list. Or otherwise, I can create a new contact by typing a name and giving numbers and a work email, okay? So I can say uh, something like this. The fields are not required, so I can just press save. And you can see here the device contact asking to save the contact into the phone, okay? So very well. Now we can go back to the application and see the another feature, so the last feature related to device integration, which is the uh, barcode component. I can add a new screen here, which is barcode screen, that is reached by an event starting from the toolbar, okay? And in this uh, screen, you can add a view component, okay, that launches an action definition, a new action definition, which is scan barcode, okay? Into this action definition, we will have the barcode component that is reached by a success flow and redirects with all the required flows. Okay, so we need to instantiate here the scan barcode action definition and we reach this action definition with, with a flow, okay, with a navigation flow. I add the success flow that goes back here and I have to be sure that the barcode event is played also in the toolbar. To generate uh, a barcode, we will use another strategy, which is having here a new screen, which is called barcode. This screen contains directly a barcode component that works in the format QR code and value type phone contact and receives the information from the contact list. So generate bar, oh sorry, QR code and passes on the binding all the information. So the address, which we don't have, but we have the email, we have the name, and we have the mobile phone number, okay? So we can save and generate once again the mobile project. 
and in a few seconds we will be able to see the results directly in the mobile app. Okay, it's just taking a little more seconds than expected. Okay, I go back to the home page, oh, sorry, the home screen. I have the barcode button that I can uh, select and I can use the scan barcode button. Okay, this opens the uh, phone camera. So I just need to provide a barcode like the one of the mobile application so that I can scan the barcode and get the results. To get the results, you can use a form component, for example, or you can save the information into a class of your domain model. Otherwise, let's see how to generate a barcode using a contact. If you click here, you can see that immediately you have the barcode generated that can be also scanned in order to retrieve information. Okay, let's end the webinar taking a look at the late uh, feature that we included, which is the user registration. The user registration requires to have a data service project and a mobile project both done in web ratio. So this component is proprietary and works with a proprietary uh, user service, which is the registration service that must be exposed from the domain model of the backend. Okay, so we need to have a user service here exposed for register. In order to use it, we need to work on the mobile project adding, for example, a new screen to register the user into the uh, mobile application. So we add the registration screen with a new form, which is user data, okay? And we can add a flow starting from the login uh, component. Okay, let's suppose that the user starts the mobile app and doesn't have already an account registered. Uh, we need the username, the password, and the email. Okay. And then we need to have an action definition, which is registration action definition that receives parameters from the form and registers the user into the backend. So I connect everything with the success flow and after the register, I put a login in order to immediately authenticate the user after the registration. I connect everything with the required flows and then I use, as always, the input port wizard for binding all the required information. I also bind the password and the username between the register and the login operation. Then I save and I go back to the app view where I place the instance of this action definition, which is the registration. I add all the required flows like this one for saving the user, okay? And then the redirect must lead to the home page of the protected area. Now, in order to generate, sorry, in order to emulate this new feature, I need to generate the mobile project. I need to switch off the Webration Mobile Developer app since I have to clear the local data, otherwise, it will authenticate automatically. So I reset the account manager, okay? I save the changes and then I go back to my application, okay? Using the connect button. As soon as the app loads, I will see the login uh, screen asking for a username and a password, okay? Now it's taking a little bit more than expected. Uh, let me just close and restart it once again. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so I just connect once again. Now it seems to be working. 
okay so it's loading and you see it opened the login screen i can uh, choose to register a new user oh sorry here i have mandatory values uh, i need to remove the validation of fields from the login form this should be a quick change to apply so that i will be able to <clears throat> redirect the user to the registration screen and authenticate into the mobile application so i open the registration page i type a username which can be this one for example i type the email address of the new user and then i press save as soon as I press on save, it will be loading, synchronizing, and opening the home screen of my application. So basically, this is everything I wanted to show you. Uh, we took almost 30, 35 minutes. So uh, if you have questions and answer, this is the right time to submit your questions. I kindly ask you once again to use the GoToMeeting chat that will be available for uh, five minutes from now and then the webinar will will stop so i give you these five minutes i wait for some of your questions feel free to raise your hand and uh, write into the chat Okay, I don't see uh, questions coming. By the way, you have here all of our contacts. So if you want to contact us after this webinar, feel free to do it at these addresses. So uh, I just leave the addresses for you uh, and I and I keep waiting for questions okay there is one question coming okay there is one question which is uh, how to edit the style for the mobile application uh, well in uh, web ratio mobile platform 8.2 you can apply and change uh, the style associated to to the mobile application directly from the mobile project so you can open the uh, project uh, view of the mobile project and go to the layout options okay here you see that you have this drop down which associates the style to a mobile project right now in the workspace there is only one mobile uh, style project which is mobile default otherwise you can open the web ratio add-on store and download additional style projects moreover uh, you will be able to create a mobile style project directly from the tool as it was also available for the web platform edition okay for mobile style project we have already uh, up, upload, uploaded two styles on our web ratio add-ons one is the partner network style and the other one is this style which are easy to configure which have already some some features inside okay so they have special templates layout parameters and so on Another question coming. Another question coming is uh, how to work with notification if the phone is not connected to the internet. Well, this is a good question, and I will uh, I will try to answer it right now. 
on the basis of what we have seen, we require a backend and uh, a frontend which are connected. And uh, you, you see, like in the example of today, uh, the notification arrived immediately since we are running on localhost. But I think that the notification are put into a queue. So the phone, if the phone is not connected to the internet, I think it's a matter of the Google Cloud service messaging to manage the queue. And the same, I think, is for iOS. OK, uh, here is in another uh, interesting question related to the minimum version to run mobile application in Android. If I'm not wrong, is the version 4.0.3. Okay, but I have to check. I will let you know by email. Okay, so I don't see other questions coming. I think that uh, for this webinar, is enough so thank you for thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar uh, other questions coming later will be answered by email so don't worry for your questions and uh, we will uh, we will answer your your other questions by email so Thank you for attention and thank you for attending this webinar. And bye and see you to the next one.